what's going on in the U.S. Of course, the U.S. is the world's largest economy. The U.S. dollar is the world's largest reserve currency. So what happens here doesn't stay here. Uh, and uh, we're heading for a very uh, severe recession. I just want to kind of explain briefly the dy dynamics of that. Um, so the Fed's raising interest rates. We know that they started, you know, it, so it wasn't that long ago, but March 1st, 2022, the Fed policy rate was zero. It was zero percent. Today, um, it's four and a half percent. So uh, that's four and a half percent in about eight or nine months. Uh, people remember Paul Walker. Oh, Paul Walker raised interest rates to 20 percent. Well, he did. But uh, so, so far, Powell hasn't raised them as high. Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, hasn't raised them as high, but he's raised them fast. I mean, even when Volcker was working his way to 20 percent, it took three years from 1979 to 1982. Uh, and um, Jay Powell has done this in, I guess, say eight, eight or nine months. So that's a very rapid, very steep uh, path. Um, they started with uh, you know, baby steps, 25 percent, uh, sorry, 25 basis points uh, last March, um, and then uh, 50 basis points following that, but then four hikes in a row, 75 basis points each. And the most recent one, just uh, a few days ago, got us up to uh, four and a half percent. So, so what's going on? Uh, so Powell's plan is clear because he's told us five times. Uh, he's starting to worry that no one's listening, but he gave speeches and he said the same thing all five times. He said, inflation is job one. You know, it's not that we don't care, but unemployment is gonna go up. We're gonna have a recession. He doesn't use the R word, by the way, but it's implicit in everything he says. We are gonna have a recession. Unemployment is going up. And too bad, it's kind of too bad because we gotta get inflation under control. And um, they they have what they call the DOTS, silly name, but uh, the, the members of the Board of Governors and the Federal Reserve Bank presidents put, um, give estimates or the, you know, their estimates of unemployment, inflation, uh, growth and interest rates for the next three years. Uh, and they put them as dots on a chart. So they call it the dots. Uh, and then, you know, Wall Street gets the dots. They do a central tendency and regressions and all this stuff. By the way, I, one of the top Fed insiders, like, I mean, like practically sits in Jay Powell's lap and has all the way back to Bernanke and Yellen told me personally, he said, the, the inside the Fed, they regard the dots as a joke. They're not better than guesses. Their forecasting ability is dismal. You or I would have better forecasts. And they wish they could get out of it, but they don't know how. So, so that's the truth. But the problem is Wall Street and the financial media and the talking heads on CNBC, they want to talk about the dots and it does affect market behavior. So even though it's a joke, even though the forecasts are terrible, you have to pay attention because it affects the markets. And if you're affecting the markets, and you're on the wrong side, you're gonna get run over. So I look at the dots, not because I put weight on them as predictive analytic tools, but because the market pays attention. So we have to pay attention. Inflation is still high, too high. I buy gas and shop for groceries just like everybody else. So it's still too high, but it has come down from 9.1% to 7.1% in the last um, five, uh, five months. And so the market says, hey, you did it. You're, you know, you're already there. Inflation is coming down. Why don't you stop? And by the way, you're going to get the memo, you know, maybe in February or sometime soon, you're going to get the message. The economy is going to be slowing down. Inflation is going to be coming down. You're going to you're going to hit the pause button early, meaning maybe as early as February. And then you're going to cut rates. This is the famous pivot. Whenever you hear of the Fed pivot, that's when the Fed turns around and starts cutting rates instead of raising them. And that'll be just in time and growth will slow, but it won't be too bad. And we'll come in for a soft landing. And this is the Goldilocks scenario. Uh, so again, typical Wall Street, get the pom-poms out. The Fed's going to cut rates by March. And so buy stocks. That's all Wall Street knows is buy stocks. So that's Wall Street's version. So there's the power plan and then Wall Street's version. Here's the reality. There is a chance that we are already at the terminal rate, but the conundrum is is inflation coming down because the Fed is still hiking or is the inflation coming down because they're at the terminal rate? Well, we don't know. It's kind of hard to sort those things out. Powell would say, yeah, it's coming down. I know that, of course, but I got it. It's, it's because I'm hiking and I'm going to keep doing it. My view is, no, you you actually did it. It's mission accomplished. You just don't know it. You're fighting. You're like the, you know, the Japanese in the, uh, in the caves fighting four years after the end of World War II. I mean, you're still raising rates and you already got to where you want to go. Um, 
That means, as usual, they're going to screw it up, they're going to blunder, they're going to go too far, and it's not going to be a mild recession, it's not going to be Goldilocks. In this version, Goldilocks gets eaten by the bears. In other words, you're going to throw this economy into a very deep recession because you're going to go too far, as usual, and you're not going to know it until too, too late. By the time you realize you've, it's mission accomplished, you will have gone too far, too long, rates are going to be too high, and it's not going to be a soft landing. I uh, give a pretty tough analysis. I don't consider myself a doom and gloom person. I get called that all the time, but I, I'm actually a very optimistic person. But I'm also a realistic person and an analyst, and I don't think you serve listeners or readers or viewers very well if you don't kind of tell it like it is. So uh, so we, we deliver it uh, straight, um, but, uh, but I also offer solutions because I think that's kind of your obligation. Um, a couple things would be obvious from this. Number one, reduce your exposure to equities. If if Wall Street's talking up the stock market based on the soft landing Goldilocks scenario, the Powell's going to stick to his guns and, and, and raise rates too high. That's going to cause stocks to crash very severely, very suddenly. If, if the market were adjusting, so yeah, Powell means it, uh, it's going to keep, man, we ought to come down a little bit. That would be one thing, but that's not what's happening. The market's trying to rally. Powell's warning people what's going to happen they're not listening and it is going to happen so markets will crash so lighten up your equity exposure this the i'm not saying sell every single stock there's room uh, for a slice of stocks i would uh for the stock portion of your portfolio i would look at uh, energy like you know companies like um uh, you know, the, the obvious names, you know, Chevron, BP, ExxonMobil, Marathon, because they have refining capacity. We're not getting away from oil and natural gas, you know, in, in, in my lifetime, probably not in this century. Um, you know, the whole, uh, I, you know, I, I've got nothing against solar power and windmill, but it, windmills, but if you think you can run a modern power grid on that, you don't, you know, nothing about physics, you know, nothing about the baseline power needed to maintain a power grid, you know, nothing about um, the chemicals needed to make batteries for electric vehicles. There's not enough lithium in the world to uh, to make more than a small fraction of all the batteries they say they're going to have. Not to mention the fact you use up more energy mining the minerals, the cobalt, the lithium, the copper, and, and the nickel you need for the batteries than you say you have in the batteries themselves. They wear out after eight years. Uh, and how much energy and water do you use to do the mining to get the lithium to make the batteries? And why is that good for the environment? So n none of it makes sense. It's an ideological crusade by a bunch of elite eggheads who have a hidden agenda, which is about transferring wealth from the northern to southern hemisphere. So you have to see through this, the, what I call the Green News scam. Um, so that means that oil and natural gas have been so beaten down by the Larry Finks of the world that, uh, but we're going to need them. There's no substitute. Those are really uh, good stocks to buy. So I would lighten up on equities overall, but to the extent I had an equity slice, I would look at the energy sector. And by the way, unemployment is a lagging indicator. People go, well, there's no recession because unemployment is not going up enough. No, unemployment is a lagging indicator. When when you're under when you're in financial distress, you cut all your costs. As you, you know, you turn out the lights. You do a lot of things first. The last thing you want to do is lay people off. So, but when things get bad enough and you start laying people off, of course, that's hard for those individuals, but you're already in the recession at that point. That's not a leading indicator. That's a lagging indicator. The leading indicators say the recession is definitely coming. So, but yeah.